Hi, my name is Peach, let me not waste your time. Today I'll be teaching you a newer technique on how to twixter and retime your clips in DaVinci Resolve. But a fair warning, this method is heavier on your PC compared to the other methods, but the result will look very good. All right, to start off, what we're gonna do is change some keybinds to make things easier. In order to do that, we're gonna go to DaVinci Resolve at the top left of the screen. Then we are going to hit keyboard customization and this panel will pop up. In the search bar on the right side, we first are gonna type split clip and then hover over the shortcuts already there. And then I'm gonna hit this plus button to add another keystroke. And for this one, I'm gonna use H. Next, we're gonna type in new compound clip into the search bar and bind that to C. Lastly, we're gonna type open in timeline and bind this control to T. Putting in this key bind, there will be a conflict in the shortcuts and all you have to do is hit assign, go and unbind the trim mode setting and then just take it off there and you should be good and you can just hit save. Now that we have that done, we can go back to our timeline and to the clips that we want to Twix. I have them lined up here like this, where the start of the clips are synced to my markers and every clip is on its own layer. In our media pool, I'm going to make a couple bins by right clicking here and selecting new bin. I'm going to name the first one CC for compound clips and then I'm going to make another bin named Twix. Now I'm going to go back and open up the CC folder and select our first clip on our timeline and hit C to make a compound clip. There will be a prompt that shows up to name the clip, but you can just hit OK. Then we're going to do this for every clip. What we're doing is creating composition for our clip so we can contain our twixing process. Once all the clips are put into their own compound clip, then we can condense our clips to the first layer by moving them down like this. Now we're going to take the end of our first clip and shorten it and extend it back again until we can see these numbers pop up. This will tell you how many frames the clip is. Once we know that, we're going to remember this number and then we're going to go select the clip again and hit T to enter the compound clip timeline. You will see that the footage we put into the compound clip is right there. Next, we're going to add a fusion composition by going to our effects library, going down to the toolbox, effects, then fusion composition. You want to make this easier to grab in the future, you can hit the star next to the name and it will pop up over here. We're going to take this clip and put it above our footage. Then we're going to extend this clip to however long the number was that we just memorized. And I like to go one frame more than that number just because this will be where we retime our clip after we are done. So I'm just going to put it onto the first layer behind the footage there. Now I'm going to duplicate this footage that we have here by holding alt and dragging the clip upwards. Then on the track setting on the left side, we're going to disable the clip by hitting the film strip and lock the layer by hitting the lock. And now we can just work with the footage. In order for our twix to look right, we need to cut off all the frames that are duplicated in our footage. In order to go frame by frame, we're going to use the arrow keys left and right. And since we binded our cut key to H, we can just hit the right arrow key and H to cut out every single frame individually. We're going to do this to the end of the clip. It should look something like this. Now we're going to go back to the beginning and delete every duplicate frame like this. I'm going to use the arrow keys to go frame by frame. If there's a clip that is duplicated. I can highlight the frame by holding control and then hitting the arrow key to select that frame. And if I hit the delete key, you can delete that clip and it automatically gets rid of the space in between the two frames. So we can just go to the next clip. Now just repeat this process until the end of the clip. What you want to focus on when looking at the frames is the movement driven by the focus of the clip. So every time Chica moves and not the background. Sometimes you can see a pattern between these frames so you don't have to look at every single clip. The gap could be every two frames or three frames that does not need to be deleted but I just keep my eye on the viewer to see if I make any mistake. Once that is done you can play this back and make sure there is no duplicated frame and select all these frames. Make sure you have your flicks bin open then compound clip these frames. Once you have that done we can unlock our first layer and drag our fusion clip onto the top of our clips and then enter fusion. We first are going to open our media pool and grab our compound clip just drag it into our composition and connect it to our media out then we're going to hit shift space type in time stretcher and add that onto our node tree if your playhead is not already at the beginning you will need to uncheck the source keyframe on your node here and then go to the beginning of the composition and keyframe or source time here so the value is at zero and if we click the media in node you can look at this number right here and it will tell you how long your clip is so we're going to memorize that number put our playhead at the end of the comp and make a keyframe on our source time on the time stretcher node with the value that we just saw in the media in then if we play back what we have you can see that the clip moves out through the whole time that we set it for and from here, what we're going to do is open our spline graph and retime how we want the clip to look like. I usually do an ease in spline like this for my retiming, but other people may like a curve like this. It all depends on what the look you're trying to go for. Something like this for this clip will look the best because I think there are more frames that look similar at the end of the clip, which will make the Twix look better. Sometimes if you don't like the first couple frames, you could fast forward to where you want the Twix to start. I, I can start right here because right there is going to be a big warp. I started at five frames, something like that. Readjust my spline and something like that should look good. So then we have our video retimed like this. Now for the newer method that we're going to use, we're going to add an optical flow node and place it before the time stretcher. Then on the time stretcher, we're going to go and change the mode from blend to flow to check mark off all these boxes. This check mark box makes it so that the edges don't warp and these help with sampling the footage. Once you have that done, we're going to go back into the edit page and play back our footage in order for it to start caching or pre-rendering the preview of the clip. Just wait till the red bar turns blue. Once that is done, you will see your twix and your retime that you did and then you can go to your next clip. You don't like how some of the clip warps too much you can also go back and try and keyframe on certain places where it was, it was like a 0.5 of a frame. You don't really want to use that, like that one. We could keyframe it just to 11. 
just so it doesn't give that extra little warp. That's it's okay. We can give it just a ten if we want, like that. And let's use this to eight. So we just get no warp. So now it's just clean, clean, clean. Next clip I'm gonna do is this one right here because I have this scene being synced up to multiple beats on the music, and I have another trick that I want to show you. So I'm just gonna go through this process again. We're gonna do this clip. Let's just bring it down. We got 17. We got 109, and it's at 202. 17, 109, 202. All right, we can go into here. Let me just mark it out even on this clip already. So just bring this up. Need 17 right there. 109 and then 202 like that now i can stop memorizing those numbers and just grab my fusion clip drag it back on top here like that and then now i'm just gonna even just mark it mark it on that fusion clip because i can and we just bring this one more frame back all right bring this down here we're gonna duplicate this footage turn this off bring it down we don't even need to see all these frames like this it's kind of up again open our twix holder there we go i guess like for this scene there's not a lot of movement in the scene so we don't have to just go through all that footage we can just go to where we see it the first movement that we want to twix so we still go like right there that we just delete all this first stuff movement no movement there we go like that no movement just talking i'm not gonna twix that let's do that let's do delete this again bring this here bring it down and that's where it stops. Do that. Right, so we have this movement. That's where we're gonna. It's the whole clip we're gonna twix. Now we're just gonna cut all these frames again. A lot less to deal with than that whole long clip, right? All right. Got it. Cut out. We're gonna go through it. We just have this these clips. And you can see on one of the clips, like the mouth is pretty much okay. It's not moving that much, and so it'll, it'll twix fine. But on one of these clips, he's actually blinking. So if we do that, it's gonna work really badly. So we actually do, I learned this from Keaton. We actually take one of these clips with the eye, probably this one, cause it's kind of bent and kind of wanna match that. Take it, duplicate it, put it on top of the other one. And so just go into fusion and we're gonna actually mask out his eyes. So we just take a polygon that's up here, just like this, zoom in and then probably go around this little shadow on his eye as well. Just go around the eye, mask it out. Something like this will be good. Put it on here. And I'll probably put a little bit of soft edge so it can blend a little bit better with the background. Nothing really obstructing it. I'll probably increase the border width just a tad. And then we can just use the viewer controls in the inspector just to line it up quickly up to where it should be. A little higher. Let me just check. That's not too bad. A little bit of a jump. I might. Bring it back just a little tad bit. You don't want to even angle it a little different. And that shouldn't twix too badly. All right, that should be good. And now we can just compound clip this in our twix bin like this. All right, let's unlock this layer. Let's get our fusion clip that we have. And we're gonna stretch all these seven frames throughout this whole thing. So let's go into fusion. Let's bring our clip in. I'm just gonna put our retime thing on. I have a macro that actually allows me to do it really fast. Just like that, and it puts it in the spline, and we got the seven frames that's here. Like that. But we also wanna take into account for all these markers that we have on the clip. Let's just actually mark this out on the timeline now. We're gonna put these, we're gonna put keyframes here uh, under these markers. We get mark out the time, but we also don't want to, when we're messing with this, we don't want to interact with the markers on the spline graph. So we're going to right click here and go to options and then uh, the enable marker grab is checked on. We're going to mark that off. I already have it off. I'm going to do that. And then we're just going to um, retime where we want his head to be during the certain times. So we want his head to be just at the start of the peak of looking up, which is around here i think it's at four frames we'll mark that out and then we'll go back to where he's looking down which is at seven frames i believe the max and then and we don't have enough frames for it to go back to more frames in the footage so we can just actually go back to a different number and then it will just go between it just like that so then we can do and then 
curves I'm going to use for this, the actually S curves. So a curve that just makes an S shape just like that. And I'm just going to something like this, but we're also going to move these keyframes. So what we really want is the most vertical part of the graph to be under the marker because that's where the beat is synced. So we're just going to move it like that. And we move this over here, maybe even flatten the spline a little bit more or should bring it like this and we could check it. We probably bring this out a bit more. Check this one. Bring this in, so we extend this. Even bring this up a little bit. All right, so now we have something that looks like this. A little snappy over here. I can we flatten this out just a little bit more. It'll be a little bit smoother. All right, that, that, that'll look good. Now we're gonna do the same thing we did before. We're gonna add an optical flow node. This time, time stretcher, we're gonna change it to flow, plant the edges, everything like this, and then back to our edit page and then just play it so we can start caching this clip i have repeat set on so it's going to go to end the comp and then it's going to repeat and this for me i don't know why but it's helped me uh, render stuff better so in the meantime while this is doing it there's also the setting that i got from vision that if you click these three dots i don't know if i can do it while he's playing okay and then hit show all video frames it will force everything force this preview to show every single frame before moving on to the next frame i did don't know why that isn't already enabled on, but that's how you get like playback in the color page and delivery page where it's super smooth. Right now we have this, which that looks pretty good. There's not a lot of warps, you can see maybe on the little tips of the hair, but I think we can show about that, but that looks pretty good. Let's bring it back to here. And it's synced very good. Yeah, and just basically do uh, those methods. Even like replacing the eye or replacing the mouth for certain scenes. If you have any more questions or suggestions of what I should do in the future, please let me know down below in the comment section. If you'd like to join the Resolve Amy Community Discord server, there will be a link in the description, as well as my own server if you'd like to join. And with that, subscribe and have a good day.